Our topic today is trusting God with the battle. Um, this was sparked by a, a verse that was in the last sermon I did on when we were talking about David and Goliath. There was a statement that David made in the process of talking with Goliath that really jumped out at me. He said to Goliath, for the battle is the Lord's. Uh, the same sentiment was repeated by Jehoshaphat uh, when he was in his moment. He tells the people, for the battle is not yours, but God's. So I started thinking about us and, and uh, you know, how that applies to us, and that's going to be our topic for today. Turn in your Bible over to Ephesians chapter 6. We will spend uh, all of our time in this passage uh, today as we go along. Um, you know, it, it says, at the beginning it says, Finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, and against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. You know, the thing that jumped out at me when I thought about this verse, and the reason why we're talking about this verse, is because of that first highlighted section, it says, for our struggle. You know, we have, we have a struggle. We have a battle in life a lot of times. And I don't know that, uh, I don't know that we want that, but that's the way life works. Um, you know, there is a struggle. You know, you might be struggling uh, this morning uh, right away when you walk in and, the, and you see me come up here to preach. You might be thinking, wait a minute. I thought the new guy was supposed to be preaching today. I thought that too. I thought, you know, this Sunday I'm not going to be preaching. He thought that too. Thankfully, he's here. You know, I didn't expect to be preaching today. I had, I had some plans this weekend that got changed. That can be a struggle. I, you know, I suspect Cash probably didn't want to have pneumonia this week and be knocked out sick all week, which is how I ended up here. You know, that's, that's a struggle. Um, you know, we... Uh, <laughs> That, and then we're doing the singing. And, and uh, so there was, you know, somebody else was supposed to be singing bass today, and they're out sick, and so I'm going to be singing. I thought, okay, that's okay, I can sing bass. And then one of the songs is Sea Crew We Wanna. <laughs> I'll give you a little bit of insight into me and struggle. Any song that involves a dance section, I want to be nowhere on stage. <laughs> You may have noticed that my dance looks exactly like my walk, which wasn't that good anyway. I, you know, it's a fine song. I'm, I'm, I'm glad we sang the song. It's okay. But, you know, it's not the song that I want to be up front singing because it has dancing in it, and I don't have any dancing bones in my body. You know, we have struggles in life, and I'm, I'm kind of making light of it. But we have lots of different kinds of struggles, and some of them are a lot more serious than what I'm talking about. I mean, we have, we have hardship that we have to fight through. We have, we have struggles with sin in our life that we have to work through. We have outside opposition sometimes. We have, we have lots of different kinds of struggles. Yeah. Um, and so that's what, that's what this verse, these verses are really trying to help us get ready for. You know, we need to understand that we're in a battle. And I think a lot of times we, we lose sight of that idea. Um, you know, it's, it's dangerous to be in a battle and not know you're in one. Um, you know, can you imagine walking out onto a battlefield in a war or walking onto a football field in the middle of an intense part of the game and you're just walking along not aware that there's anything going on? And all of a sudden, you know, things start happening and you're just, you're going to be in trouble if you don't know the battle's going on. Um, it, it was fascinating to me as I was thinking about this, and, you know, I'm certainly not going to get into all of this, but there's the whole thing that's going on in Ukraine now, um, you know, where all of a sudden there's a big section of Russia that is under control of Ukraine. Well, how did that happen? Well, part of the reason that that happened is because they didn't know there was going to be a battle there. And so they were just there minding their own, own business, and all of a sudden there's a battle there, 
and they're taken over because they weren't prepared for the battle. By them, I mean the Russians. So, you know, it, we can go through the same thing where we don't know there's a battle going on and then when it shows up, we're not ready. Uh, it's dangerous to be in a battle and not know it. Here's the thing. Nobody would choose to live in a battle zone. I mean, you know, when you're going to look for, we don't even want to be in a bad neighborhood, much less a bad, bad uh, battle zone. Nobody would say, you know, I want to live there because I hear there's war going on there, and that seems like a great idea. No, we, we wouldn't do that. And so because we don't want that, sometimes we just ignore what's going on. Uh, and that's dangerous. Here's the thing. We're vulnerable to capture or worse if we're unaware. So we need to be aware that we are in a battle. So let's dig in a little bit more. What's the nature of this battle? He says, he says, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand. Oh, here's a, here's a, a line that you don't want to hear. So that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. I don't know how you feel about the idea that the devil has schemes about you or about me. I don't like that idea, but, but there it is. But look what he says after that. He says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Here's, here's the first thing I want to say about this section. One is the battle is spiritual, not physical. The battle is spiritual, not physical. Look, it's not about countries. It's not about politics. It's not about economics. It's not about these people or those people that we like or don't like. And a lot of times when we think about battles that we're in, these are the things we think about. <clears throat> it's interesting, in, in the verse that we read, he talks about how it, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but then the first two things he mentions when he talks about the battle not being against flesh and blood is he says it's, it's against the rulers and against the authorities. Now, I, I can't tell you that I know for certain what he was talking about there. But here's what I can tell you for certain. The rulers and the authorities of the time that this was written were opposed to Christians. They were being arrested. Paul spent a lot of time in jail, imprisoned by the rulers and authorities. So even though he's being persecuted by rulers and authorities, he says, look, the battle's not against flesh and blood. <clears throat> Even though flesh and blood is arresting him, even though flesh and blood is putting him in prison, he says that's not where the battle is really at. The battle is spiritual. <clears throat> so it's not about these things. Okay, here comes, here comes a radical teaching that's appropriate uh, for this time of year. It's not even about other football teams. <laughs> now, I know how you people are at this time of year. Okay, I mean, it already leaked out when Corey did his little welcome thing. You know, he, he had to take a shot at FSU. It's not against flesh and blood, Corey. I actually put this point in here specifically for Eric Rennestrand uh, because I thought he needed that at the beginning of football season. You know, we get worked up about football teams sometimes and games. It's not about that. You know, you got you to gotta love all those people. You know, you got to love the Bulldogs and the, the Seminoles and all those other people as well. Yeah. What we're fighting is the devil's schemes, right. his intentions for us. Right. <clears throat> you know, we shouldn't be surprised when we face opposition or trouble. And yet it catches us off guard sometimes, doesn't it? We, we, you know, sometimes we go through life and we say, what's going on? I, 
you know, I became a Christian. Why, is my, why am I struggling? Why, why am I having a difficult time? Shouldn't my life go smooth and easy now? Well, it doesn't usually work that way, whether you're a disciple or not. And, you know, we do this weird thing sometimes when we think about life and we're going through struggles. We, we, sometimes we look back and say, well, why am I struggling as a disciple? My life was easy before. No, no, it wasn't. See, that's one of Satan's schemes, is he tells you how good your life was before when you're going through a tough time. You know, that, the reason you're here is because it wasn't so hot. Um, you know, that's just the truth. Um, you know, but we think that kind of stuff sometimes when we're going through struggle. Don't be surprised. That's life. You know, read, read your Bible and see how all the other people that God loved lived. Every, I promise you, every hero you have in the Bible, every person you look at and say, wow, what an amazing person. I wish I could be like them. All of those people had a tough road sometimes. Not always, but a lot of times. I mean, you know, the communion this morning, Abraham, poor guy, he waits till he's 100 years old to get a son, and God says, go, go sacrifice him. What? You know, struggle. We shouldn't be surprised. Let's go on. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. Here's, here's an interesting thing about this passage that I noticed more when I was getting ready for it this time. And that is, we're not called to be strong and powerful. We are not called to be strong and powerful. You say, oh no, I, I saw it said right in the verse. It said strong and powerful right in the verse. No, he says, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. You know, I think a lot of times when we face struggle, when we face hard times, what we try to do is we, we try to, we say, okay, I've got to be strong. I've got to, you know, I've got to be, I've really got to be good here because I'm up against something. Paul, Paul's admonition to them is that you guys better be strong because you're, you're going to get, you're going to have opposition. He says, no, be strong in the Lord. Yeah. Rely on his power, not your power. Look, my power is not that big. My power is not going to overcome the things that I face in my life. I've got to rely on God's power in the Lord, in his mighty power. Even the armor, you know, he says, uh, he says, put on the full armor of God. Not, not my armor, not my own protection. Put on the protection that God has given us. He says, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything, to stand. Stand firm then. Boy, there's a lot of standing in that verse. You notice that? Let's, let's talk a little bit about what we're dealing with here. One, we need to use what God has provided for us, namely the armor. And we're going to look at that a little bit more in a minute. Uh, so we need to do that. But our job is to stand. You know, that's, that's pretty simple, isn't it? You know, I, you know a lot of us, a, a lot of us can't do some of the things physically that we used to do. <laughs> Clarence, I cannot watch track and field anymore and watch hurdles races and not think of you. For my whole life, I watched hurdles races and I never paid any attention to him. Now, every time I see them, I think of Clarence. I don't think he's hurtling anymore. <laughs> but he can still stand. Maybe not all day, but, you know, I mean, he can stand. God gives us a simple job. He says, you've got to stand. That's, that's what your job is. That's what my job is. We have to stand firm. Now, that's an interesting way to describe it. He, first, he says to stand and then he says, stand firm. What does that mean anyway? What does it mean to stand firm? How is that different than just standing? Well, here's the thing. We have opposition, 
that is trying to push us off of our spot. God has called us to stand firm because someone's trying to knock us back, to move us out of the way, to get us somewhere else. And we've got to be firm in the way that we stand because we have opposition. So, let's, take, let's read through the armor and then we're going to do a little looking at it. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So there's the description of the armor. Now, I'll tell you another story. I thought, well, you know, I'm talking about the armor of God. This will be easy. I'll just go online and figure out what the armor looked like because he's, you know, they're talking about Roman armor. They're living in Roman times, and Paul's chained up next to a Roman dude. So, you know, I mean, that, that's the armor he's talking about. And so I thought, well, I'll just look up what the armor was like. You, you can't get a straight answer about this when you go look this stuff up historically. Now, here's the problem. Rome ruled for a thousand years, and so the armor changed a lot over the time. But to the best that I can tell, this is during the biblical period. This is kind of what they were using. So, you know, that's the armor. You see it. Um, and, and I thought the shoes were particularly interesting. You're like, why do you have a big picture of the shoes? I was fascinated by the shoes. Would you want to go to the, would you want to go into war wearing sandals? <laughs> I kept looking at that. I said, man, you know, one stray arrow and you're done for. But that's what they wore. But what was special about those shoes is they had a very firm base and they're like cleats. I, that's essentially what they are is cleats. Those studs all over the bottom, you may be able to tell by looking at the side shot, but they stuck down so they could stand firm when they were in battle. They were, and they could march in them all day long. Um, and so they were actually very suitable for what they did, but it wouldn't be what I chose. Let's talk about the armor that that guy was wearing. He starts off, and we're not going to dig into this in great detail. That's for another time, but we need to talk about it some. <clears throat> He starts off with the belt of truth. Now, if you, you know, if you looked at that picture, what's the first thing you would put on the list? <clears throat> I would dare say it wouldn't be the belt. You know, you might talk about that cool helmet. I mean, that, that shield, that was impressive, right? I mean, it's like, wow, I didn't, I've never seen a shield like that. I, you know, that's, that's crazy. I thought it was going to be one of those little arm jobs. No, this is, I mean, it, you know, that was an impressive shield. You know, the, the sword, you know, I mean, the sword's always in the movies. I, you know, wouldn't you talk about the sword? He starts off, and, and you know, that cool segmented armor, he, he starts off talking about the belt. We've got to have truth in our life. You bet, we better start with truth. Um, you know, I, I was telling, I, I, I told, I was talking to somebody the other day, and they told me that somebody had told them something, and it, it was true, but they didn't say it very tactfully. Um, and, you know, they were, kind of, they were kind of offended by the way that somebody told them. And this was somebody that I was close with. I said, look, in life, I figured out that if you, if, Tact is a dollar a pound, pay $100 for truth. You need truth a lot more than you need tact. Hold on to the people that will give it to you. I mean, the belt of the Roman armor protected the vital organs. It protected the, the intestines and the whole lower abdomen. You, you know, it's what, it, it, held, it helped hold the other armor in place. It held, it held the breastplate in pra place on the bottom. It held the sword. It was very important. It protected the soldier in a great way. We've got to have truth in our life. We've got to know the truth about God. We've got to know the truth about ourselves. Um, you know, we've got to have people that will tell us the truth if we're going to to win in the struggle, if we're going to win in the battle. 
God says, you know, the Bible says, put on the belt of truth. You got to have that. It says, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now, I, I thought, you know, this will be the easiest one to talk about. You know, it's, it's big. You understand your heart and lungs are there. You know, you got to have that. And it's right there in the picture. And then I started thinking, you know, is it, am I dealing with my righteousness or the righteousness of Jesus? Hmm. So I said, well, it's God's armor, and I'm fighting against the schemes of Satan. I think I'm going to opt for the righteousness of Jesus. That's what I want. I mean, when Satan sees us, I want him to see Jesus in, when he looks at me and tries to find my weaknesses. Now, 1 Peter 1.16 says, God tells us, be holy because I'm holy. So we got to deal with our own stuff as well. I mean, we, gotta, we, we can't be unrighteous in our lives. Gary talked about that in the communion. So it's both, but we need to have the protection of our heart and our, our lungs and our organs by the righteousness of Jesus against what Satan is coming at us with. Having our feet fitted. I showed you the picture of the shoes. It, depending on what translation you look at it, it may, instead of fitted, it may say your feet shoed or your feet sandaled with the readiness of the gospel. You know, what do we stand on in life? We've got to stand on the good news. You know, that's what we've got to be ready to share. That's what, that's what keeps us in place. That's what makes us solid is the good news that we've heard. And we need that in our life. He talks about the shield of faith. Man, <laughs> that's important stuff. I mean, if you're, if you're standing in a battle zone and there are arrows coming at you, flaming arrows, uh, you know, in, in verse 16, he, he says, in addition to this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. I, you know, it's bad enough that Satan's paying attention to me. It's worse that he's firing arrows at me, but does he have to set them on fire? I mean, you know, there's some point where you say, you know, that's not fair. I'll tell you what, if you, if you, want, if you want to get protected from that, you want that shield. That, the Roman shield typically was covered uh, with leather. And very often before battle, they would soak them in water so that when they, when they were shot at with fiery arrows, it would put them out. That's one of the things that they did in battle. So our faith matters a lot. We've got to build our faith. We've got to strengthen our faith. We've got to grow in our faith if we're going to overcome Satan's schemes, if we're going to be doing well in the battle. And faith is a gift from God, it says in Ephesians 2. You got you to gotta have the helmet of salvation. This was another one of those things that I thought, okay, that one's obvious. You got to make sure you're saved. And I think that that is, a, is right. You know, you, you have to have salvation. Uh, but I think a lot, a lot of times, you know, we think about salvation as, well, I, I need to get my mind wrapped around salvation. Well, the admonition here is you need to get salvation wrapped around your mind. You know, <laughs> get it over your brain. What do we think about? What do we dwell on? You know, one of, the, one of the keys to overcoming the battle, to relying on God in the battle, in overcoming the struggle, is to have our minds set on what is in heaven and the fact that we're saved and we're going to be with God. And lastly, he talks about the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. We desperately need to spend great time in the Bible, in reading God's Word. You know, that's how... That's what's going to build up our shield. That's what's going to give us faith. That's what's going to give us the answers. You know, we don't have the answers within us. We've got to go to God's word. Uh, and, you know, that's, you know, even Jesus when he was in the desert, how did he overcome Satan's schemes? How did he overcome the struggle? He quoted the scriptures. And so we need to really be devoted to the word of God if we're going to overcome the struggles. He closes out this section. He says, and pray in the Spirit 
on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Um, you know, the first thing I get out of this is that prayer is really important. And it, it's certainly easy in the b busy lives we lead to neglect that, but we can't afford to do that. But let's talk about the nature of the armor of God. And the Roman armor is the example. Uh, one is the Roman armor gave some protection to the individual. So you saw the picture of that guy, and he, you know, he had all of that stuff on. So if you were in a battle zone, you'd be better off with that than without it. So it gave you some protection. But the real way that Roman armor was intended to work was not on an individual basis. It was much more powerful for a group working together. That's how it was designed. You know, sometimes we have to stand alone in terms of, of how we do, deal with struggle. But we're at our best when we stand together. Um, I wanted to show you a couple of pictures of how they use the armor. This will give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, this is, you, you can go online and look up Roman battle formations, and I promise you, you can spend two hours looking at all the interesting formations they did. You probably ought to do that. It would be great for the football team. You'll get all kinds of ideas for plays. Uh, you know, they had some cool things they did. I mean, look at how they're using the armor as a group to protect themselves. Uh, you know, it's, it's amazing. You know, some, they, they, and they had some really unusual formations depending on what was going on. This is a formation that they used when they were breaching walls. So, you know, the, the, they'd get a hole in the wall and the, the infantry would run up as a group and they would take this formation and the guys on the top are actually on the shields of the guys below going through the hole in the wall, but they're all together protecting each other. <laughs> There's a bunch of these kind of photos. What, what's that mean? It means that when we're in the struggle, we need to be in it together. We need to help each other. Your faith is going to help you, but when your faith is combined with 40 or 50 other people's faith, you're going to be much stronger. I want to be, you know where I want to be? I want to be right in the middle on that bottom layer. <laughs> you can't get me back in that middle spot. You know, I'm, 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 I want to be in the middle layer praying for the guys up on the top. <laughs> we need to work together to overcome struggle. We need to work together as we, we deal with the struggle and as we rely on God. That is when we are at our best. We've got to trust God in the battle. We've got to trust each other. We've got to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. If we do, we will overcome the struggle. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.